All right, guys, I want to take a moment and talk about the Hess's Law Lab. They're going to split this up kind of into two main parts. The first part is going over the data table. Let's make sure you have the proper information in the data table and kind of understand what's going on within the reaction itself. So we did three reactions. The first reaction is where we took solid sodium hydroxide and we mixed in with water. Now, you can write water, you can include water in this equation. Um, if you did sodium hydroxide solid plus water, then you would also need to keep sure that sodium hydroxide aqueous and water are also in the products. So because water is both in the reactants and the products, we don't usually write that, so you don't really need to include water. So reaction number one is just solid sodium hydroxide forms aqueous sodium hydroxide. The second reaction we did was where we took that solid sodium hydroxide again, and this time we dissolved it in aqueous hydrochloric acid. Now, a lot of people say we dissolve it in hydrochloric acid, which is true, but I want, I want you to think of it this way. Aqueous means dissolved in water. So think of it like we took sodium hydroxide and we dissolved it in water again, but it just so happened that hydrochloric acid was in the water as well. So we are still dissolving sodium hydroxide in water, but we are doing it with hydrochloric acid in there. That forms sodium chloride and water as two of the products of this reaction. The final reaction, we took aqueous sodium hydroxide. So, so just think of it as water with sodium hydroxide in it and water with hydrochloric acid in it. And we put them together and we allowed the water to be the vessel for a reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Those again form the same product. So just slight differences. Now I'm gonna go through the data. Your data might be slightly different than mine, but I just wanna explain the different parts. So keep your data and make sure you use your data when you're doing this. I'm gonna start with the water section. So you'll notice that we have this section right here and it all deals with water. That's because in a calorimetry experiment, water is what we do our reaction in because we know the specific heat of water. We'll just use water to either absorb or release the energy and then that tells us the energy of the reaction. So let's get going, let's start with mass. In all of our reactions, we used 100 milliliters of water. In the first one, we put distilled water in there. In the second one, we put 100 milliliters of of water with HCl in it, so aqueous hydrochloric acid. In the last reaction, we used 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide aqueous and 50 milliliters of uh, aqueous hydrochloric acid. So that e equaled up to 100. So just putting that there. Next is the specific heat. Because we're using water to determine our reaction, we're gonna use the specific heat of water, which is 4.184. Finally, the change in temp. So we were able to use our temperature probes to determine the change in temperature for each of these reactions. And that's mostly what we spent time doing in the lab. My first reaction was 3.8. Second one was around 10 degrees of a difference in change. And the last one was 6.8 degrees difference in change. All right, how about Q? So Q should be equal to these three things multiplied by each other. So Q is equal to M times C times delta T. So I'm gonna go ahead and just determine what those are. And I, I just took some rounding. I, I just rounded some of my answers. They're not perfect rounding. I probably should have rounded them to two sig bigs instead of one. I'm just kind of getting this done, quick, quickly done. Um, so what we learned is in our first reaction, according to Q, water absorbed 1,190 joules of energy. In the second reaction, water absorbed 4,180 joules of energy. And in the third reaction, it absorbed around 3,000 joules of energy. So that means our reaction had to lose that much energy. So over here in our reaction section, our reaction lost that much energy for each of those reactions. So we're just gonna carry that over. So calorimetry is where we do a reaction in water and that just means that whatever water did, our reaction is the equal but opposite amounts in terms of energy loss. Now we gotta think about how many moles of our reactant we used and we're focusing on sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, for each of these, we used 0 0.05 moles. You might need to use some stoichiometry in this, and you might also need to use the molarity equation for the main reaction, because molarity is equal to moles per liter, but each of them is 0 0.05 moles. So that brings us to delta H, and we've been talking about what delta H is. Delta H is the symbol, symbol for enthalpy, and enthalpy is the change in heat energy, but not the total change in heat energy like Q. It has to account for how many moles we use. So enthalpy is 
how many joules per mole. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that out. I'm going to take negative 1,190 divided by 0 0.05, negative 4,180 4, divided by 0 0.05, and negative 3,000 divided by 0 0.05. And I'm going to get these. And these are in joules per mole. But enthalpies are usually listed as kilojoules per mole. So we're going to convert that to kilojoules by moving the decimal place over three times. And this is just to kind of give us some clean data. I like this a little bit better because it's a little bit easier to manage this number than dealing with the, all of this. All right, so we have our data. And that's hopefully you were able to go through that experience in the lab. Now let's get to the hard part. What exactly is this all saying and, and why do we care about this data? Well, we care about it because it's helping us prove Hess's law. And Hess's law basically states this, basically says that these two step reactions are similar to the main reaction. If we added up those step reactions, we should end up with our main reaction, both in the reaction itself and in their energy change. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If you haven't done so already in your notebook, you need to have a little section. Oh, we need to have a little section that's called Hess's Law. So let's follow along in our notebook. We need to make sure that our main reaction right here follows these reactions. So we're going to look at this main reaction. Look at our step reactions. In our step reactions, do we see a sodium hydroxide anywhere that's aqueous? Well, yeah, we see it in reaction one. Now, we have the same amounts of both. There's one sodium hydroxide here and one sodium hydroxide here. But they're on the this one's on the wrong side of the reaction. So we're going to change our step reaction. We need to flip this reaction. So in our notebook, let's do that. Let's make a little Hess's Law section. Let's flip that reaction. Let's put sodium hydroxide on the left and sodium hydroxide on the right, aqueous on the left, solid on the right. Now, if you remember when we talked about Hess's law and all the tips and tricks that we needed to follow, when we flip a reaction, we need to change the sign of delta H. So I'm going to rewrite delta H down here. I'm going to rewrite its enthalpy in kilojoules per mole, but this time I'm going to change it from a negative to a positive. All right, so we have accounted for our sodium hydroxide. Let's look at hydrochloric acid right now. I see that this reaction too has hydrochloric acid and oh wait, it, it also has sodium hydroxide or sodium chloride and water. So this is the reaction that's going to help us with those last three things right there. So I'm just going to rewrite that down there because we have proper amounts and we don't need to flip the reaction. I'm also going to bring down my delta H down here and not change it. All right, so this is how Hess's law goes. It, these two reactions, we want to be able to add them together. But before we do that, is there anything that needs crossed out? If you look, sodium hydroxide solid is right here on the left side of the reactions, and sodium hydroxide solid is here on the right side of the reactions. We can cross both of those out. Everything else is going to stay, and we're going to kind of bring them together down here, similar to what we did when we talked about net ionic equations. So this is that net equation where we add the two-step reactants together. Take a look at this reaction. It's pretty amazing. If you see this reaction right here, it's exactly like our main reaction up here. So we just proved using Hess's law that these two step reactions, if you were to add them together, equal our main reaction. So in, according to Hess's law, we can add these two enthalpies together, and that's what we get, at least for my data. You might get something a little bit different, but hopefully you're going to see something really cool here. So notice that this is the enthalpy of this reaction according to Hess's law, and we actually did this reaction in real life. So let's take and compare those two values. Our reaction according to Hess's law should have yielded negative 51.9 kilojoules per mole. So every mole loses that many kilojoules. Look at our actual value right here, negative 52.7. We're like po negative 0.8 off, which I think is pretty amazing. Obviously, there's going to be some error involved, and we need to account for that in our data. So this is how Hess's law works. We're just taking two step reactions and comparing it to our main reaction. They add together. Our two step reactions, or all of our enthalpies of reaction of formation, for step reactions come together for the enthalpies of formation for the main reaction. And Hess's law helps us figure that out. All right, that's all I got.